back at the museum. Let's see how much we need to put in. Rogers just added what he hopes could be the solution to the old car's engine problems, a remodeled carburetor. Let's give it a go. It's sort of, oh, hang on, just thinking about it. Well, I've got it going, but it's um, making a bit of banging and crashing. Shouldn't be banging and crashing like that. So I'll have to have a look at, at the carburetor, I think. But you can hear it banging and misfiring. Carburetor mixes air and fuel in the engine in the correct ratios to create internal combustion. I'm going to take the top off the um, float chamber. You see it's floating in petrol and uh, what it does, it actually comes up against here and closes the fuel off. So I'll use this device to actually hook it out. The float ensures there's always the correct ratio of air and fuel. So this, this goes through here, and uh, the idea is the float comes up, it pushes against those little levers there, and it then pushes that little, le little shaft down with the sharp edge, uh, and that, that stops the flow of fuel then into the chamber. But a flunking float can have dire consequences. It would probably set light to the car if, if uh, that didn't work. <laughs> so it's fairly important. So this has uh, just recently been remade. It's used the original top and bottom. Just notice that um, there is some fairly rough edges to the solder, which may stop it going up nice and clean. So I've got some emery cloth, so I'm just like, literally going to rub it and hopefully get rid of some of these high points in the solder. Replacing this component isn't as simple as merely matching its dimensions quite a difficult thing to remake this because you've got to make sure it's exactly the same weight as the uh, original one because otherwise it won't um, float in the fuel to the same level and then the level that goes through to the jet in the carburetor will be different. If the float fails to cut off the fuel, it could spill over onto the hot engine and cause it to ignite. Well, hopefully this is going to make a bit of difference and uh, the engine will run OK. Give it a go. After years on the sidelines, Daisy is finally firing on all cylinders. Time to put this legendary car through its paces on the famous finishing straight. Or not. The trouble with old cars, they don't have fuel gauge. You can have a calibrated bit of stick, which is the original proverbial dipstick, but I think I'm the dipstick at the moment for running out of fuel. But anyway, we'll put some more in and hopefully it will go. Well, it's, yeah, it's not bad, as long as you remember to put some petrol in it, it's not too bad. <laughs> There's life in the old girl yet. <laughs> Tamalee's favourite car, Daisy, is finally up and running thanks to volunteer Roger. So we've got ignition on. I'm going to do what they call tickle the carburettor. And she has a plan to achieve her aspiration of driving Daisy on the track. I've been at Brooklands for two years now and I haven't driven any of the cars in the collection, which is a bit of a regret. So I've organised a driving lesson from my predecessor, Alan Wynne but I've been driving this little electric leaf for a long time now and I'm, uh, it's an automatic and I'm not even quite sure if I can remember how to change gear, so I'm not sure how I'll do. I'll be pleased if I don't hit anything and don't make a fool of myself. Morning, Tamalee. Morning, Alex. Tamalee has roped in her second in command, Alex, the director of collections, for moral support. I don't even drive a manual car at the moment, <laughs> let alone a pre-war car. <laughs> this doesn't bode well, as she's about to get behind the wheel of a 1934 Railton terraplane on this historic banked circuit. 
At least it's a big open space. I shouldn't be able to drive it into anything. True. If Tamily can't get to grips with this car, she won't be able to realise her dream of driving Daisy. And Tamalee's predecessor and classic car expert, Alan Wynne, won't be pulling any punches. Hi there. Morning. Good morning, Mr Wynne. Good morning. Welcome to the Brooklyn Vintage Driving Academy. What you have to remember, of course, is that there's no power steering on this thing, and the brakes, um, they're not servo-assisted, so when you put your foot on the brake, you might be surprised at how little slowing down you initially do. You're introducing me to a whole lot of things to worry about that hadn't even <laughs> crossed my mind. OK. And there is no elegant way of getting in, so don't worry about it. All right. Can yeah. I have a point for that? Yeah. <laughs> so now switch the ignition on. Just like on my car. Just like on your car. <laughs> give, it, give it a bit. That's it. Right, so we'll just, we'll just stay in first gear at the moment. So yeah. Just give it a little bit of accelerator. Oh, sorry. Why is sorry. that crunching like because that? Because you're moving the lever too quickly. OK. Definitely should have brought a hairband. Oh, sorry. Didn't wait long enough. Oh, dear. Not in a gear at all. You are now. Is <laughs> gear in Whoops. there somewhere? Yes. Pick a gear, any gear, as my father used to say. Bring it across into second. That's it. Perfect. Oh, I changed gear. I change gear, I change gear, Alex! <laughs> I love how heavy it feels. Clutch down, push hard on the brake to make sure you stop. Stop, come to a stop, handbrake on. Obviously, we need some more gear change practice, but overall, yeah, that has been a very promising first set of lessons. Alan's feedback was really encouraging, actually. So it was the first time I've ever driven a vintage car and I really am kicking myself that this has been here part of my job for the last two years and I haven't actually done it before because I really enjoyed it and I do have my eye on one in particular that I would really like to have a go at driving. Tamalee has her heart set on Daisy. But not all vintage cars are as straightforward to drive as the Railton. Tamalee's newfound confidence may be heading for a knock. After a successful driving lesson, Tamalee is about to realise a lifelong dream of hers by getting behind the wheel of the very first car to go round the UK's first ever racetrack. You in your finest get-up, Tamalee? Certainly am. Driving in the appropriate attire wasn't easy for women back in 1907. Are you off to Daisy? I am indeed, yes, looking forward to it. Looking lovely. And Tamalee wants to experience what it would have felt like for her heroine, Brooklyn's founder, Ethel Locke King. Hopefully, Rogers remember to put enough fuel in Daisy this time round so Tamalee can make it over the historic finishing straight. Hi, Roger. Oh, hello, Ethel. Yeah, <laughs> hello. <laughs> right, so no doubt you want to drive. I do, I'm really excited now, so can I have a go? Oh, I dare say, yeah. We're nearly Come going. On, Daisy. We're nearly. Oh, hang on. Oh. Come on. Well done. Noisier than I was expecting. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. I'm going to stall it, aren't I? You're off. Thanks to the team. Tamalee's dream of driving her heroine's car has finally come true. Oh, my goodness. Oh, it's quite fast. <laughs> now I need to not mess it up. Well done, Tamalee. And Daisy. <laughs> Very good. It was a really moving experience, I think, being out there on the finishing straight, driving the car that Ethel drove on that exact same piece of concrete feels like a real privilege, feels like a, a little chance to walk in her steps or sit in her driver's seat. Oh, she's lost oh. her hat! Oh! Hat down! <laughs> going too fast, Emily! Going to try and. There we are. 
Smoothly done. Very nice. I can't believe how well she's doing. I mean, that's not an easy car to drive. How good are the brakes? Great. How do I stop? No, come back. Come back. What do I do now? You know, we're not just a load of static exhibits.